Even latte sipping tofu eating Chardonnay socialists who watch the ABC have to go supermarket shopping, right? Excuse me, which are for fair trade, free range, organic eco chai? Um, that way? But thinking about ethics isn't just a niche thing anymore. The Australian ethical shopping sector is worth more than $27 billion a year. Which might explain why the number of products making ethical claims is up. Up, up, ethics are up. And projected to grow by 20% annually. Take canned tuna, for example. In your average supermarket, there's over 120 different varieties for sale. They all try to appear like they're the morally superior choice, <laughs> but some claims are so broad, they're meaningless. What does our oceans forever even mean? I have absolutely no idea, and oceans are my thing! But that's still less vague than wild caught. When is canned tuna not wild caught? And then there's these. Every major tuna brand says it's dolphin safe. Now it is true that human activity can be harmful to dolphins, but... What's that flipper? So for most of the tin tuna that Australians eat, the dolphin safe logo is as useless as this or this. Besides, when millions of sharks, other fish and even turtles are caught and killed as tuna industry bycatch every year, boasting about the safety of one species is an irrelevant distraction. just two pieces of information you need. First, how was it caught? Pole and line caught is the gold standard in sustainable fishing. It's one-on-one -on -one fishing. It's man versus fish. You can eat these things straight out of the river like that. I've always liked sushi. That is like the freshest. Whoa, pole and line caught is definitely better than that. Even though only about 7% of tuna is caught by pole and line, all the major brands and supermarkets now carry the option. And it's not even more expensive. The vast majority of tuna is caught by Persane, the kind of drawstring net that got Nemo. Some types of Persane netting are considered sustainable, but a third of it's done in combination with fads, fish aggregating devices. <laughs> Pay attention, this is important for you. Fads are floating objects that attract all kinds of marine life by acting as mini ecosystems. Fads are extremely effective at catching large numbers of fish, which can be the problem with them. Especially in the case of juvenile fish. All major tuna brands say they're moving away from fads and towards pole and line, but then again, brands say a lot of things. So until they fulfil their promises, you might want to keep your eyes peeled. And while we're taking care of all the other species affected by the tuna industry, spare a thought for the tuna themselves. Greenpeace says skipjack and albacore are the safest choices because their populations are the healthiest. But the tuna's at greatest risk of overfishing and the ones to avoid are yellowfin and big eye. So maybe take Aldi's Ocean Rise yellowfin tuna off your shopping list. But at least Ocean Rise tells you clearly what's in the tin. Some brands don't. Serena uses the term genus thunnus, which sounds specific and sciencey, but it covers all species of tuna, including yellowfin and big eye. So it's a bit too fishy. Genus homo? If they don't clearly say it's skipjack or albacore, you can't be sure. As you can see, even on a narrow issue like tin tuna, making an ethical decision can be complex. If you think it's more complicated than you can be bothered with at the shops, and that's totally understandable, Greenpeace has a canned tuna guide on their website and on the Sustainable Seafood Guide app. It really is an ABC Greens conspiracy. He's right, kinda. Using the app means you're adopting Greenpeace's value system, potentially without knowing the full details. But you might prefer that to relying on corporate marketing departments. Uh, don't you know mobile phone manufacturing causes civil wars, environmental degradation and factory suicides? God. You can't win. 